If you like cyber ninjas and chopping people's limbs off, then you're probably thinking about picking up the new Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. The story follows Raiden as he attempts to stop an evil private military corporation from carrying out their dastardly plans. The game is a bit of a departure from previous Metal Gear games, this time Stealth will be taking a backseat to slicing things into tiny little pieces. But will this new formula be a hit, or will it have you wanting to commit seppuku? Let's find out. Raiden is back, and he's looking more badass than ever before. He's running his own private military corporation, which focuses more on security and safety than warmongering. Unfortunately, his rivals think all this peace and stability nonsense is bad for business, and they're looking to cause a little havoc. Your job is to shut them down before they start any more unnecessary wars. Unfortunately, that's going to be pretty difficult, as your enemies have augmented themselves with pretty much every cybernetic enhancement they could find. Man, these guys have been playing way too much Deus Ex. The result is a bunch of very unique and memorable villains. Pretty much every boss battle in this game feels epic and it's not just good character design. The cutscenes are fantastically written and visually spectacular and they flow nicely back into the combat. The voice acting and dialogue in this game is also very good for the most part. I really like Sundowner's voice acting though. The cybernetically enhanced war-loving hillbilly was probably my favorite cast member. Kids are cool, Jack. And I'm very in touch my inner child. Using memorable characters, good writing, and some fantastic cutscenes, the game earns definite points in the story department. Let's talk about gameplay. The key feature in Revengeance is the new Zandatsu mechanic. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it allows you to slow down time and slash enemies in their weak points so you can extract their delicious spinal cords, which somehow give you health. The game says that you get this health from electrolytes, but I don't know, Gatorade has electrolytes and you can get that at the store without ripping anyone's spine out. Anyway, the Zandatsu system is extremely rewarding when you pull it off correctly. However, sometimes the weak point is difficult to locate with the camera and you wind up in slow motion frustration mode. But for the most part, it's a good mechanic that adds a great deal of depth to the game and also looks pretty damn cool. When you're not in slow-mo mode, you can attack your enemies with a variety of moves that you can purchase through the upgrade system. However, when you choose your skills, you're really just guessing as to how much damage they do, how fast they are, and what buttons you need to press. All you get is a text description, and once you've bought the skill, you've spent the points, and you can't get them back unless you return to an earlier save. You'll also get a secondary weapon that can provide you with some more hard-hitting attacks. One minor complaint about the secondary weapons is that you don't have a lot of options to choose from. But the weapons you do have look pretty cool in action, so I guess it evens out. You also have a ninja run in the game, which, aside from looking badass, allows you to deflect bullets and perform slide attacks or dashing attacks. However, while the ninja run makes deflecting bullets fun and easy, deflecting other attacks is kind of annoying due to the fact that you block by pressing toward your enemy and the attack button. I found it counterintuitive to have your block be the same as your attack button, and I really wish they had switched it to another button, Y or B or whatever. Also, there's no way to quick select sub weapons during combat, which would have been nice. The game also tries to preserve some of that classic Metal Gear stealth by letting you sneak around in a box or drum, but it doesn't really work very well. I mean, don't get me wrong, seeing Raiden sneak around in the box is hilarious, especially if you have the mariachi outfit equipped, because then you're a box wearing a sombrero, but the stealth aspect is just kind of a joke on many levels. The camera is super f***ing obnoxious, and for some reason will automatically spin you away from the direction you're trying to look if you happen to be too close to a wall. This makes it difficult to track the movements of the enemies you're trying to sneak by. Also, it's kind of difficult to tell how far your enemy's line of sight is. I thought Dishonored solved this in a clever way by showing you their eye line, and Metal Gear Rising would definitely have benefited from a similar mechanic. Also, I ran into one part where I was trying to stealthily exit an area, and I ran into a wall that I sliced up, and the shards f***ing blocked me from moving past it. And then when I got spotted because I couldn't move through some wall shards, an invisible wall appeared and made me fight the guys I had been trying to sneak past. I really, really dislike invisible walls. I think they're the result of lazy game design. There's another one here that bugged me as it prevented me from attacking this chopper. Now yes, I may have fallen off the cliff and died if I attacked, but just let me fall and die. I'd much rather that than an obnoxious invisible wall. Also, in many fights, I feel like I'm fighting the camera just as much as my enemy as it's constantly trying to spin different directions. The lock-on system sort of helps, but I wish I could just make it so that the camera only looks where I'm pointing it, which doesn't seem to be an option. 
Content-wise, you're really only looking at about six hours of actual gameplay, but that doesn't mean the game is six hours long. This being a Metal Gear game, you're going to be watching a lot of cutscenes. But as I mentioned before, the cutscenes are well written and graphically appealing, so you don't really mind that much. Overall, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is a good game that needs to work on its camera, controls, and stealth mechanics just a little bit, and also eliminate some invisible walls. But this was the first Metal Gear game that focused on melee combat instead of stealth and gunplay, so I'm really hoping they make another one of these where they have the kinks all worked out. The game's still got a great story that feels true to the Metal Gear universe and gives you deeper insight into one of its more interesting characters. I give Metal Gear Rising Revengeance 8 robotic spinal cords out of 10. Thanks for watching, be sure to tell us what you thought of this one in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.